Another job I want to do on the Vanguard, well, not only want to do, but need to do, is go through the clutch hydraulics. I've already been doing that with the brakes, as you can see. Uh, reconditioned master cylinder with a stainless steel bore, and it come with uh, one of the later plastic caps. And uh, this one has replaced the um, uh, later master cylinder, obviously another replacement at some point in the car's life with the tapered end. When I went to great uh, expense to find one of these, which uh, is what it had originally with the screwed bung at the end. And then I had to fork out another uh, load of money just for the original metal cap but it looks the part <laughs> this is the thing with me you know the sills can be hanging off the car well the sills are hanging off the car and no, no need to imagine it i'll speak figuratively about it but as long as the details are correct you know and We've got the nuts and bolts correct and uh, proper, then I'm happy. <laughs> well, getting there anyway. Um, as these things go, I've already spent way more on parts than uh, I actually paid for the car itself, but uh, you never add up. It's not about that. It's not really about the cost. It's about getting it back on the road and using it for the purpose it was designed for, transport. I digress anyway. The clutch master cylinder here is undoubtedly the one it left the factory with, it's got to be. Um, you can tell that just looking at it and the aforementioned uh, design of these early uh, uh, pendant type master cylinders. Um, metal cap, it's seen better days, but the clutch works, and the clutch works fine, there's fluid in there, but it just wants doing for reliability. I know the hydraulic manufacturers, Lockheed Girling, they said in period literature, the braking system should be renewed with new rubbers, etc. every 18 months. Well, that's overkill really, but certainly uh, 40 or 50 years service, or maybe even more, means that it is definitely due for an overhaul. So that'll be coming out, there's no drama removing that, I've already done the brake one, it's just a simple uh, pendant pedal with push rod arrangement secured by... Uh, a clevis pin and um, split pin so that's fine going under the car I've got a clutch uh, clutch slave cylinder kit so I'm going to be doing that myself depending on the condition of the bore but this one the master cylinder I'm going to send away to have done to do it justice so we'll go and have a look down under the depths of the car there I've got my mat set up and uh, you can see part of the clutch hydraulic pipe work there um, there has to be a flexible hose because the engine has the potential to move you see as it, uh, it, as it is a power unit there are torsional impulses so let's get down there and see what we're greeted with and I should warn you it's not pretty so that is the flexi hose it looks like it's oil soaked from the engine it's in quite close proximity to the engine there I will renew that as a matter of course but I'll probably uh, degrease the engine block etc first um, and here is the uh, clutch master already 
we can see it's missing the protective rubber boots, the dust cap from the end, and it's in quite a state. Now, removal won't be difficult at all. It's only two uh, uh, bolts there with not securing it to the uh, a bell housing, or is it a bracket? Looks like a, a bracket which is screwed to the um, uh, bell housing there. And we've got uh, such refinements as a grease nipple for the uh, operating shaft. Uh, I went round and did all of them shortly after I got the car. So I think there's a, a slight uh, drip of fluid leaking from it, but it just wants doing. And uh, I've got peace of mind then. The thing that always is a struggle with these, and I can give you a tip now, is the flexi hose. That's the first thing you slacken off. You're never going to remove it because the hose will just twist and uh, you don't want that if you are uh, intending to use the hose again. But certainly you must slacken that flexi hose off before you remove the slave cylinder. And access is very tight here. So what I'm going to do, weighing it up, is I'm going to remove the bleed nipple which will allow me to get a spanner just to crack this uh, flexi hose off because there's no way I'd be able to shift that um, with the uh, slave cylinder loose. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I can't film that, I'm afraid. Um, I don't have enough hands and it's very awkward under here, so... Uh, you'll just have to um, be satisfied with uh, a description, I'm afraid. So I'll get that off and we'll have a look. Not a too bad a job really to remove it from the car. Being uh, soaked in oil of course helped. Uh, kept all them uh, fittings from seizing up. So there it is, and I'm just weighing it up. Uh, we'll see properly when I remove the uh, piston, but with there being no dust boots, that will have allowed uh, moisture and damp to get in. Uh, my concern is uh, what condition is the bore. Uh, all will be revealed shortly. Because that will depend on whether I can do it myself or if it needs sending away for uh, sleeving. So we'll see anyway. Push rod came out all right. That's uh, looking in good order. We'll respond well to a clean up, which is what I'm going to do next. Get everything degreased nice and clean so uh, I can work with it. Now with it all cleaned up, it's much easier to examine it for any flaws, etc. I don't know what uh, metal this is, but it's quite a nice uh, casting. What looked to be rust is just tarnishing, really. I don't know exactly what it is. It must be, it's got to be steel, surely, of some kind. I don't know, but I'm taking that G to be uh, girling, if I had to guess, that's what I would guess, girling. Um, all the other parts have come up uh, well. I'm meticulous in this, so every single thread has got to be cleaned. I know there is a school of thought um, that holds grime and grease etc forms a preservative layer and I don't dispute that it does but it's no good for when you're reconditioning something and uh, it also attracts a lot of grit etc in the push rod it is salvageable 
there is some corrosion there but I'll rub that down and uh, I'll probably give it a coat of paint so the next step will be how to get this out remove the piston because that's got to come out and the question is how do you remove that well I have a solution in the form of uh, a tyre pump which uh, was no good for pumping up tyres but with the end removed it's great for removing pistons from hydraulic uh, systems so that's what I'm going to do I've screwed the lead nipple back in because otherwise the uh, would just uh, rush straight out of there so as you can see this is an ideal fit and you've got to put a mat or something protective down because you can't be doing this over concrete or tarmac because that piston has to remain in perfect condition so this should just start with a bit of pressure it's coming it will come out with a pop a bit tight right um, you'll see uh, now there's a foot pump because I started filming this and the first attempts just became ludicrous and farcical because the old uh, hand tyre pump uh, well it failed in a nutshell it failed so the other thing was this you know because there was no dust boot there was a ring of corrosion inside the bore so that was preventing any uh, further movement of the uh, piston which is what finished off the uh, foot pump because of the pressures you see now, you'll notice I've put the bleed nipple back in, that has to go in, otherwise the air uh, uh, would just go in there and out through here. Um, there will be a fair amount of pressure, you know, even though it's just a foot pump. So, if you're using compressed air, you have to be even more careful. Um, but we know that that's free to move the piston because the clutch was working. Uh, so I've just removed that ring of corrosion from inside the bore and now I'm just going to try and uh, get it out. You'll notice I've got an old mat down here. Uh, that's because it needs to be a soft surface. You cannot do this over concrete or tarmac or stone etc or anything hard um, because the piston which has to have a perfectly smooth surface might get damaged so you want something to catch it because it's going to pop out at quite a, a rate is that really I should have a pile of rags there as well to cushion the blow but here we go There we go, pop, goes the weasel. Right, so there is the piston, one piston, one seal, and one spring. So now, let's have a look at the bore. 
so here it is and uh, it's not as bad as i first feared i know it's quite hard for you to see with the naked eye i'm just playing about with the settings here to try and improve this there we go yeah it's not as bad as i feared it's actually quite smooth in there and will respond well to some very very fine grit wet or dry there's no scoring that's the word i was after no scoring or pitting from uh, corrosion other than this ring that had formed around the uh, the top there which is a wonder really a wonder it's as good as it is so yeah that'll clean up nicely um likewise the uh, piston here that will also clean up it's not been damaged by being forcibly ejected because it was uh, it had its blow cushioned you see any damage to this would be a new piston so that's a good thing and uh, well the, the seal of course that's for the bin I've got a seal kit a rebuild kit so I'm gonna use that so there it is in pieces and uh, ready for rebuild not as safety critical as the brakes of course uh, which is why I'm just going to use the uh, wet or dry on there. Um, if I did have any doubts about this, I would have just sent it away to be done uh, professionally by a firm, you know, properly geared up for probably sleeving it or something. But I'm happy to rebuild that myself. It's not as bad as I thought it was. I'm just checking my Humber clutch slave cylinders and it's a similar story with them actually. Um, you see the, the retaining ring is just a, a bit of uh, steel wire really which is prone to corrosion so um, I'll find an alternative, it would be nice to have a stainless one. Now um, I've cleaned up the slave cylinder and the piston there and the bore it's it's not come up uh, as well as I'd hoped I'm just trying to arrange this for you to see it's okay but there is a ridge a slight ridge just inside it halfway down That'll where the, be where the piston has been acting. And I can just feel that with my finger there, my fingertip. But uh, otherwise, there's no real deep pitting or anything or scoring. So, um, seeing as the budget for this is practically zero, I'm going to give it a go. It should be okay, at least for a couple of years anyway now. I mean, if it's been working on the car, it's probably since it rolled out of the Coventry factory with this, and it's been working up until I took it off the car. And I think it'll still be okay. Bit of... Um pit in there on the uh, piston just a bit I've cleaned it all up started off with uh, 600 grit and finished it with 1200 grit wet or dry using a bit of WD-40 just a drop to uh, lubricate it goes without saying of course that all that stuff has to be thoroughly cleaned off so I've degreased it and then thoroughly washed it all in water to remove any traces of that because uh, oil of course 
um, cannot come into contact with the rubber seals so I've done that and I've also made just fashioned a sort of clip to fit in that recess I just fashioned that out of a an old bit of wire I had uh, very stout wire and that'll fit in there which will prevent the piston from um, coming out of the cylinder so all that's left to do is my favourite part of all reassemble it which I did with the aid of the workshop manual and specifically this exploded diagram because I found that uh, the last person who did this job whenever they did, they did it had got the order of the parts wrong um, this cup here was uh, um, behind that spring so that was wrong when the cup is there um, behind the rubber to sort of support it and uh, shape it so I sorted that out and this is what it looks like inside there now and I did use a bit of red rubber grease so uh, that was it there for the slave cylinder you see uh, in a cup in a face of a rubber cup loaded by a cup filler number two and a spring so a nice simple job and all that remains to do is to refit it to the car set it up according to this uh, manual and give it a test but it's not going to happen on this uh, video because um, I'm just awaiting the master cylinder to be repaired that's been done uh, by uh, a proper established firm but I've got all the parts here that's just the old rubber that is I've got all the parts here all kept uh, together so they don't go walkies the push rod I'm going to smooth that down because it's uh, it's quite pitted there as you can see quite pitted I'll smooth that down maybe give it a skim of filler as well just to uh, make it nice and smooth so thanks for watching it's done and dusted nice uh, nice morning's job or afternoon's job a, a slave cylinder rebuild so um, yeah pretty pleased with that and the proof will be in the testing